Yo. We got some people connecting. Yes. We got a lot of people connecting. Yo. Hello. I'm going to wait for just another second here. Okay, there we go. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ethan. I'm a product manager here at Box. Uh, today we have a very special webinar uh, where we're going to talk to Vinny T, French shredder, awesome guy. And, uh, you know, just hang on a couple minutes here. We usually, you know, start the webinar about five minutes after the hour. So um, now five or six minutes we'll start. But uh, at the end of today's webinar, we'll be giving away and raffling off a box for Prime 9 drivetrain. Um, so all you have to do is be registered for this webinar and be uh, attending at the end and we will put all of your names into our randomizer. It'll pick a name at random and then you'll be able to get this drivetrain for free. Um, so all you have to do is follow at box mountain bike on Instagram, follow at box MTB, be in this webinar and be 13 years or older and have a legal address and you're good to go. We can ship you this. So hope you guys stay to the end. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, I think you can type it into chat. Although I don't really see chat on here. I might not have that. Let's see. Oh, it might be webinar. No, no, here's chat. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, put it in the chat. But um, yeah, and if you have any questions for Vinny, put it into chat. I have a bunch of questions for him. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, we got a bunch of people connecting. Everybody just hold on a couple minutes. We're going to wait till five minutes after the hour and then we're going to kick off the interview. Hope all you guys are doing well, stuck at home. I don't know how many places uh, are still stuck. Let's see. Got a question from Tim. Uh, yes, Fox Mountain Bike on Instagram. So at the end of this webinar, we're going to be raffling off this Box 4 Prime 9 drivetrain. Uh, and to be eligible for this raffle, you have to be in this webinar, follow Box Mountain Bike on Instagram, and you know be attending this at the end of the webinar. We'll put all your names into a randomizer. We'll pick one at random. Vinny will read it off, and uh, yeah, you'll get a free drivetrain. Uh, how much? Uh, how much better does that get? Yeah, there are some restrictions. So um, you have to be 13 years or older to participate and have a valid legal address that we can ship this drivetrain to. It uh, doesn't matter where in the world you are. This raffle is international. So if you're not in the United States, that's okay. Um, but yeah, if you guys have questions for Vinny, um, yeah, type it into chat or questions for me, you know, uh, feel free to ask those. See here. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's a crazy time right now. Best thing to do is go out and ride your bike. See, right now we got 40 people in here. Let's see, we got so people coming in, lots of people coming in. We're gonna wait till five minutes after the hour. 
We got a bunch of new people coming in right now. Waiting for a couple more people to join in. Let's see. If you guys have any questions uh, for Vinny, type them into chat now and I'll ask them for you. Couple more people coming in. We're just gonna start this thing off just in a second. Couple last people connecting in. I'm just gonna wait for those few people. There's about three or four people that are still connecting. <clears throat> All right. So today we have a very special webinar. Uh, we're gonna talk to Vinny. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know who Vinny T is, um, but he is a French shredder awesome guy, uh, awesome rider. You should check out his YouTube, check out his Instagram. Um, we'll, we'll promote some of that stuff. Maybe uh, Chloe can type in some of those links into chat. Um, and we're gonna ask him some questions, kind of learn what he's been up to. And at the end of today's uh, interview, we're gonna be raffling off this Fox 4 Prime 9 drivetrain. And to be eligible for this raffle, all you have to do is be attending this webinar and um, follow Box MTB on Instagram and uh, be 13 years or older and have a valid legal address and we'll ship to anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter if you, um, you know, live near Vinny or, you know, live in the United States or anywhere. Um, so, you know, stick around to the end and you have a chance to win this Box 4 drivetrain. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to start this off and say, you know, thanks for joining us, Vinny. Um, you know, we're stoked to have you here. Um, I think most people know who you are, but um, yeah, tell us, who are you? How old are you? Where do you live? Okay, so I'm uh, Vincent Tupa, and uh, I'm 25, and I live in uh, Avion in France. Okay, so... Um, You've been riding really big stuff for so long, but where, where did it all start? Like, when, when did you start riding and kind of like, what got you into, you know, riding mountain bikes? Yeah, it was, uh, I started with my brother and uh, some other friends. And uh, I started with uh, door jump, door jump biking at the skate park or uh, like that. And, um, yeah, after that, after maybe five years of uh, biking, I, uh, I had my uh, first uh, free ride bike. And uh, at this time, uh, I was riding uh, yeah, on bike parks and uh, around my place. Oh, that's awesome. So you started riding like um, a dirt jumper or some kind of slope style bike or what? Yeah, a dirt jump. Like, dirt uh, jump. yeah. Cool. And um, like you had local skate parks by you or some trails? Yes, yes there's some uh, skate parks, but they are not really good. And uh, yes, the forest where I live uh, are a lot better than the skate parks. So quickly uh, I, I was going to, to ride the free ride bike. Oh, that's awesome. Because like, there's a lot more stuff that you can ride where you're at on a free ride bike? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the weather is 
is good where I live, but in, in winter it's a lot of rain and snow. So if you want to, to ride, uh, you have to, to go in the forest, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and riding the snow and rain. And, but that's, that's part of the fun, right? Yeah, yeah I really like it. Uh, I've seen a lot of your videos where you, you're just shredding through the snow. And it's just, to me, it's crazy because here in Southern California, we really don't, we don't have too much of that. And you can't see any of the, you know, the terrain that's under the snow. So you're just blind. Um, yeah, it's kind of the same here, but if you, if you really know the, the track, it's okay. On, yeah, yeah. I, I guess you're right. Yeah, uh, you, you need sometimes you, you you can't do do that on a on a trail you never rode before. So yeah, so all of the trails you ride in the snow you've ridden before. Yeah, yeah, a lot. As, like, so, as yeah, before. many years. Um, so like on those trails, you do um, you and your friends, you do a lot of digging, right? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's like fifty-fifty. Uh, like uh, I dig. Uh, on I ride, but most of the time I, I ride, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's part of the, of the thing. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I don't know how many people have the, you know, the opportunity to go, you know, grab shovels and, you know, uh, throw dirt to, to build something that you can, you know, say is yours. That's something that, um, you know, when I was growing up was kind of like what got me into, um, you know, riding dirt and, yeah. you know, being out there because behind my house, we had um, a forest and we could just go dig and um, nobody yeah. bothered us. But um, like yeah. you really enjoy digging and, and building trails, right? Yeah, I think it, it's important because uh, otherwise you, you don't have many things to ride if you don't build something. Yeah, totally. And you can build, um, you know, terrain and obstacles that are, I guess, yeah, yeah. You, you can't find them anywhere else right yeah. yeah yeah like um you guys do a lot of um some pretty big jumps right yeah yeah first we we started with small jumps but after some years we we decided to do it bigger bigger <laughs> yeah and uh, that's really fun to do so how do you figure out like on some of those really those big booters like how how do you figure out um you know the geometry of the uh, of the actual jump and landing, um, yeah. and like how fast you're supposed to be be going. Yeah, I think it's uh, easier with the experience because when you start, you you can't really know the speed. So yeah, you you take some crash and uh, and then you you know the speed and uh, yeah, it takes some time also to to have uh, all the experience. Yeah, you definitely have to uh, eat dirt a couple times to to figure it out, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's definitely a, a crazy um, like some of those some of those jumps and stuff that you do are are very big. Um, yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I only did it uh, one time. Only once? Yeah, sometimes. Just to get the clip. Yeah, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. So uh, when you go out with your your friends and stuff and and film and dig. Do you, do you have like specific um, like goals that you go out and, and try to like, like I want to get, um, I want to do this on this jump or down this section, I want to get this clip. Yeah, most of the time I, I think a lot uh, before and uh, I have, a, yeah, I have the idea on my mind and I know I want to do that. So yeah, most that's of crazy. the time it's like that. Yeah, yeah it's, that's crazy because like, some of that stuff is just like, I don't even know how you, um, I guess you just got to send it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> just send it and try to get it on camera as best as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, some of that stuff's really crazy. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of us have been like, like here in Southern California, the trails are open. Um, for the most part, all the parks are open, but um, it's kind of limited access in some areas. Um, for the past couple months, we really haven't been able to, um, to do too much riding because a lot of places were closed. Um, where you're at, like how, how, um, how are things like things open or is coronavirus kind of keeping you at home most of the time? Uh, yeah, it, 
it was maybe a bit different because I live in a, in a small village. So I was not too, too far from the forest. And um, yeah, I, I did some biking during the lockdown, but yeah, just uh, alone. And uh, yeah, a lot of trail building also. So you've been doing a lot of digging while, yeah. you know, you kind of can't, can't do too much else, right? Yeah, that's it. So yeah. I, I took this time to, to do some stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what else can you really do? You can't travel, right? No, no, no. Um, during this time, did you have any like events or places that you were planning to go to that you can't? Um, not really, because it was winter. So most of the time in winter, I stay at home and do the stuff I did. So it was not really different than uh, than the last years. Well, it's definitely good that you didn't miss anything crazy. Um, you know, I know here, um, you know, a lot of what Box does is BMX racing and all of the tracks have been closed and are just opening up now. So there's a lot of people that have been stuck and, you know, um, cause the tracks are closed, you know, you get a lot of practice in, but a lot of them have been riding mountain bikes, um, kind okay. of transferring over because you, you, it's easier to ride. That's a good um, idea. So I'm seeing a lot of like new kids on, on mountain bikes. And I think that's, you know, that's something that's really good. Um, when you went and you started like riding with your brother and their friends, like, did you, did you see other people and were like, you looked up to them and it's like, Oh, I want to be like that. Like what, what drove you to, to push well, yeah. yourself so much? Yeah. At this time I, I was uh, watching a lot of uh, videos like uh, movies, New World's Order, things like that. Well, what's your favorite? What's your favorite mountain bike video? Or if you have oh, one, I don't think I have one. I I like many uh, of of them, but yeah, I I don't think I can choose one. I, it's hard. It's hard, right? Yeah, but uh, I was watching a lot of those videos on the yeah. It's not. And that, that's what pushed you is like, you know, seeing other people do some crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we started to, to reproduce uh, the same things in the forest and uh, do like the same jumps, try to, to do the same jumps. And uh, yeah, it was something, uh, something like that. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, you know, where kind of like where I grew up, it was, it was kind of the same. We had a group of kids that were like, you know, older than us. and. Um, we kind of follow them around and then, you know, try to ride their trails and end up getting hurt. And <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, always good to, to have someone uh, who is better than you to, to progress. Always good to, to yeah, to totally. Yeah. Um, I think with like social media and, you know, the internet and how big YouTube is now, it's like, it's progressed everything so much. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. You know, when I was, when I was a kid, it was like, we get magazines and that was like it, that was all we had. Um, yeah. but it's, it's so like, um, uh, even for me, it's inspiring to like watch your videos and be like, Oh man, that's, okay. that's <laughs> but, um, like, so near you, you have your trails, but like outside of that area, like what, what, what bike parks do you go to? Like what, explain some of that to us. Yeah, so Spike Park, I go uh, the more. I think it's uh, Châtel. You yes. probably know the, this resort. And uh, yeah, it's, I think, my favorite bike park over there. And uh, I also go a, a lot in uh, Switzerland, which is uh, not far from where I live. It's uh, on the other side of, of the border. And uh, there is also a really good bike park there. And uh, yeah, I, I really like to, to ride bike parks in the summer. It's, it's easy with a chairlift and, uh, and uh, all the, the infrastructure, yeah, or everything. So it's good. Um, so yeah, like doing chairlift all day definitely helps you get like a lot of runs in and stuff. And um, yeah. at, um, you know, at, at any time do you like, um, do you hike a bike like certain sections and like, you know, keep dropping in and just one jump or you do the whole run and come yeah. back and do the top? Sometimes it happens that we, we work up on the, yeah, if, if it's uh, new jumps, we, we prefer to just uh, 
have a look first and then uh, jump it. It's better to do it to do it like that. And uh, if we really like a session, sometimes uh, if we want to film it, or uh, yeah, we we go back. Yeah, hike uh, a bike a couple of times. Yeah, and do so, it. Uh, once, yeah. Do you have any influence on like when they change the jumps or um, rework some of the trails at those bike parks? Do you like do you know the people that that build or create any of that stuff? Is that like are those like friends? Yeah, yeah. Some are, are friends, and um, yeah, sometimes uh, they ask us uh, what we we want to have or something like that, which is really cool. And um, yeah, I I really like uh, all the tracks there. So really good on a lot of jumps. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of footage um, where yeah, it looks like you know. <laughs> you know the bike park better than than the people that built it. Like you, you yeah, know, like no, the back I, of your hand. Not know that, yeah, I I did some uh, some laps on them, so it was, uh, it's was something a, I know. Just a couple laps. Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's that's how you get that's how you get to the level that you're at, right? Just grinding and just doing it all the time, right? Yeah, you have to ride a lot. Yeah. Um, do you feel like coronavirus has kind of slowed you down a little bit or you're riding just as much now? Mm, I think it's okay, yeah. Because I was riding at, the mo at this moment a bit, mostly with my uh, e-bike, which is uh, yeah, really easy to, to go up uh, at the mountain. And uh, I think it was not a big change for me. Yeah, so you mentioned e-bike. So um, like explain, Explain to our audience here, like, even you ride e-bike sometimes, like, it's, it's different, right? Yeah, yeah, I really like it. Because uh, at home, most of the time I, I ride alone. So with the e-bike, it's so good to, to go up quickly and do not only one tracks, but maybe two or three times the same, or just go somewhere else, discover a new place. So. Yeah, really like this bike, and uh, yeah, sometimes friends uh, make uh, jokes with me uh, about that. But I'm like, yeah, I, I like to ride this bike, and I since I have it, I think I ride more than uh, than before, so it's good. Do you um, like so? Say you go out and dig on a trail or go film. Do you ever use e-bikes or have your friend use e-bikes so they can carry gear and stuff? Or yeah, sometimes uh, cameramans use my e-bikes to to follow me uh, on somewhere because they have uh, AV backpacks. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a good tool for cameramen, I think, too. Yeah, for sure. We've used it here because we, um, we have a couple of e-bikes. We've used them for photo shoots and stuff, and it's really good for hauling gear or, um, you know, there's a couple of times where we did trail maintenance where, unfortunately, some people litter and, you know, we'll go in and we'll clean up a bunch of the trail and, and try okay. to pull, pull trash out and stuff. And it's just not possible to do that with, um, I mean, it is possible to do it on a trail bike, but it's way yeah. hard. Yeah, 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 I know. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. It, but it's like, you know, e-bikes have this like kind of negative connotation. Like you look at pink bike and all the comments yeah. and it's just, it's hilarious. But yeah, um, like I have the feelings that, uh, yeah, in USA, it's not like the same, uh, same opinion on yeah. about e bike Definitely true. Definitely yeah. true. I think what, that. Um, what's your opinion about it? I, about I mean, it's not. It's not for everything, right? Just like yeah. you have a downhill bike, a trail bike. You know, yeah. there there's different bikes for different things. Um, but for me, I'm I, I like e bikes. I think that they're good for certain applications, and you know, I'm not going to go um, you know take the chairlift with an e bike, but. No, no. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, exactly. But for the same same reason, it's like, you know, it has its place. And just like you said, we have a local trail here where um, it's very steep. It's straight up, straight down. Yeah. So um, you can do a lot of climbing in a very, very short uh, ride. Yeah. And uh, it's really fun there, but I don't have the, you know, I don't have the legs to do, you know, 5,000 feet of climbing and, you know, like, 15 miles. That's, it's just, it's a lot of climbing. So, um, you know, there we can take some e-bikes and explore and find some new trails because there's a bunch of like, you know, there's a bunch of smaller trails there 
that um, you just whiz by. But when you're on an e-bike, you can actually like pay attention to like what's around you instead of dying the yeah. whole time, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of like cool um, exploring, but it doesn't replace the trail bike. No, exactly. no, 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 right? Yeah, but. Um, no, it's super cool. Um, I, I didn't really know that you rode e-bikes. And um, you know, I think that's something that like should be promoted. It's good, I think it's good. It's good for everybody. It gets more people on bikes, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so kind of moving on a little bit. I saw your new Instagram post that you have um, uh, a new bike with a 29 front and 27.5 rear for your, de- your, for your free ride bike, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's my donated bike, but free ride oh, bike. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, DH bike. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, have you ever like ridden a 29er in the front or any of that stuff, or like ridden a 29 full uh, like DH bike, or this is the first time trying it? Yeah, it it would be the first time. I um, I always ride uh, with 27 inch wheels, so I'm curious to try it uh, 29 on the front. So um, is that something that you wanted to try? Or is it something that um, some of your sponsors wanted you to try? No, it was really my choice. And um, I was watching a uh, lot of friends uh, trying that on, or trying the 29s uh, in front of on back. And uh, I don't want to try it maybe now on, on the two wheels, but I think it's good to start with the front wheel and, and see uh, how it is. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, a lot of people are doing that and it's like, it's a new hot thing, right? Yeah. Um, what, what makes you want to like try something like that? You see other people do it and you're like, oh, that, that could be cool. Yeah, I see other people and uh, I think the, um, the place where I ride, it's uh, mostly very steep and very fast. Yeah. And um, I think it's good to try it. Good to try the big wheels uh, on front and uh, see if there is uh, any differences. So it, it's like hard. Maybe some people don't understand. Like, what would be the benefit of having a bigger front wheel? <laughs> I don't really know. No, but I think uh, uh, maybe on big steps or something like that. But I, I, I really don't know what to accept so I, I will tell you later yeah, so <laughs> you're, it, yeah. you're pretty excited to try that setup then just to see yeah. what is there right? yeah yeah i um i know 29 rolls over obstacles easier um you know once it gets moving it's a little bit um faster right because each revolution of that yeah. wheel brings you a little bit further but you also have to push around that big wheel so um right there's pros and cons to everything um, yeah. but, uh, I'm excited to see what you think. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know your trails are different than our trails here, but I've never ridden, um, like a mullet set up like that with 29 in the front and, um, 27, five in the back. So, uh, I think that's, you know, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what you think. Yeah. Um, so kind of like moving on. Um, I know that a lot of people know what Red Bull Rampage is, but, can you kind of like explain um, to our audience a little bit like about like what is Red Bull Rampage and like um, why is it something that you're interested in? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the Rampage is uh, the biggest uh, mountain bike event, free ride event, because there is also the, the World Cup uh, tour, but it's something different. It's really a free ride biking. And um, yeah, concept uh, of the event is uh, we have to build um, our, our lines. Each uh, riders have to build it, and uh, then we have to ride it, and we have two runs in the finals. And uh, yeah, it's it's really really scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean it looks looks terrifying, but um, so a big part of it is that you have to dig your own line, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have to, and it, we have, uh, I think, eight days to do it. So we have the, the teams, it's uh, the rider and the two other friends. So we are, we are three to, 
to work on the line. And uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to do it, but I like it. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that like three guys in eight days have to build some crazy, you know, some crazy line on the side of a crazy steep hill. You know, that's, yeah. that stuff's so gnarly to me. I mean, um, and I've spent a lot of time with my, a shovel in my hand, but, you know, um, I, I don't know how you guys do it. I, that's the part that I really like watching. I, I think, you know, Pink Bike does a pretty good job of covering, um, you know, people digging the lines and trying out stuff. And it gives you a cool, like, insight into, you know, what you guys are thinking. But, you know, when you're at the bottom of the hill and you're just looking up, like, yeah. how, how do you figure out, like, oh, I want to go from there to there to there. Do you guys, like, sketch something out or, you know, you, you just so used to it that it's just like, yeah, that would be dope. No, not really. I like to, to take my time to, to see everything on the face. And, uh, but as, at the same time, um, a little bit, little bit uh, nervous because there is uh, everybody and uh, we are a bit uh, against each, each other. So yeah, it's, it's hard to, to choose the line and sometimes uh, we choose a zone and uh, at, uh, at the beginning we choose it and at the end uh, we just leave it and choose something else. So yeah, it's really hard to, to find everything. Yeah, totally. I, I, um, I, I can't even imagine trying to and, and watching some of the lines that you take. It's like, dude, there's nothing there. There's no trail. You're just yeah. literally riding down the side of a mountain. Yeah, I like to to go straight on into the steep. So yeah, yeah, steep and deep, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like a lot of that stuff's very loose. Like yeah, yeah. very, very, very loose. So, but yeah, at the same time, at the same time, it's a bit loose. It's really rocky and uh, sandy. Do you um, do you prefer those lines that are like super loose, or you like the technical rocky terrain? Mm, I think I, pr I prefer loose or on fast uh, tracks and uh, technical and kind of slow tracks. Yeah, it's not a UCI World Cup downhill course, right? So it's not yeah. it's not super technical. It's just no. very steep. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's still technical because there is jumps and you have to to know your speed between the jumps and uh, most of the times there is wind also at the same time which yeah. is yeah which is really dangerous yeah but uh, yeah that's fun I, I know we talked about this before um, you know there's like you and everybody else that's up there you're competing against each other but um, mm. you're all like in the same boat. You're, you're, it's the, the risk is the same and you're all like, you know, kind of working together um, because it's so, you know, it's so um, just crazy intense. So like you guys help each other out a little bit and, you know, talk yeah. about it. For me, it's not really, um, I don't have the feeling that I am in a competitions uh because we know each other the, the risk and uh, we have a lot of respect for each other but uh, i'm not really competitive guy also so i like to to ride i like to to show how how i ride but i don't really want to be the best uh, in the planet yeah yeah and i mean uh last year you got the the style award right so yeah. it's it's clear that you just want to go out there you know, dig a cool line, have some fun. And um, I, to me, it shows, right? Because there are some other people out there that, you know, they do seem like they're very competitive. Yeah. And, you know, I, I understand that. And that's what drives them. But like, you know, going out there and having fun is like the main goal, right? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, it's just really cool to watch you guys like do that. But um, like, like how do you mentally prepare for something like that is it just like you're so used to riding extreme like really technical terrain so it's um it's just something that's not that much crazy or it's like you know you're nervous and and excited and just you know kind of want to get it done <laughs> yeah i think it's uh it's the day of the year uh, which i'm i am the most nervous because there is a lot of risk and um, i want to to do it well 
But yeah. when I am at the start, I'm like nervous, and when I drop it, it's just uh, okay because I'm on it and uh, I know what I have to do now. And uh, at the at the end, at the finish finish line, uh, I'm so happy. Yeah, you're happy yeah. it's over. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, go go. <laughs> I was gonna say you um like you're there for so long so it's like you know all of this like build up right and just yeah. waiting for um you know the day to where you can drop in from the top and, and say because you guys test parts of those lines right yeah yeah we we can test the the wall line but normally we don't have many times because uh, it takes so many times to to dig to to rest so yeah yeah we have four days of trainings the four last days is it's four trainings but um most of the time we we just ride uh, a bit in the evening and do some jumps because we we're tired yeah and there's no you know there's no chair lift so you're just yeah. hike a biking with that bike on your back up this yeah. crazy stuff how do you guys even get up there yeah i have good friends who help me at this time <laughs> But yeah, during the finals, there is uh, also um, guys from the organization who help us to our bikes. And uh, we just have to work, but it's like uh, a good 30 minutes work. Yeah, just, I, just uh, for one run, right? Yeah, just for one run. And uh, yeah, during the finals, it's uh, really early in the morning. So we are a bit uh, like, uh, yeah, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, I've... Um... I've done my fair share of hike a bike, but nothing of anything that like that, you know. And uh, I, I'll tell you, hike bike's no fun. But uh, <laughs> I like to to hike my bike, but I, I do it many times for videos and photos. But at this time, it's uh, it's quite uh, quite hard. Yeah, pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, now it's that's that's crazy. Do you do you think like to you know, you do a couple events a year and you travel, but like, is that your favorite event? Yeah, I think it's my favorite, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, normally we, we go two weeks before, so mm -hmm. we have time with friends to, to see the other spots around and um, have fun on the bike. So it's really good. Uh, it's a really good trip for me. So you like, um, you get to Utah, you, you know, you find some, um, some other trails, you hang out with friends, yeah. um, you kind of get into being there before yeah. you even start digging, right? Yeah, you have, I think you have to, to be there a bit earlier to, to, to get used to the tour you run. And uh, yeah, it's, dirt is different than uh, the dirt at home, so good to, to do a bit of biking before. Um, and um, I know with all this coronavirus stuff going on, like um, a lot of events are canceled. Will we see Red Bull Rampage this year? I hope. I hope. Yeah. But yeah. I, we hope I too. Think, yeah, I think it's possible, and uh, I wait for for the official uh, announce. Well, fingers crossed because we want to see you. Uh, we want to see you up there again this year. You know, I, I really. Uh, that's that's one event that I, uh, you know, for the last ten years, just been watch. I watch every year, and. Mm. Um, you know, you it's definitely. Come, you have to come this year to watch it in real. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can come out. I um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but it's not too far of a drive from here. It's yeah. uh, it's quite a ways. But yeah, definitely, it'd be cool to be out there. Um, you know, I can't, I can't hang with you guys, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I'll watch. <laughs> cool. But um, no, definitely, definitely a really cool, uh, cool event. Do you, do you think any other events like? That you've seen compare like um or any other events that you've been to or competed in like i know that's not really your thing but um, yeah, it's kind of the only competition i do during the year but um there is also the the fest series event yeah and uh, it's a bit similar because it's like uh, pushing uh, our limits on uh, really big jumps big jumps line and uh, yeah, I love I love this kind of events. So you like the you like to get that like that super big airtime. 
Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's crazy, dude. That's next level. Uh, I know, like, yeah, like you're saying, that's those are some. Um, I know Rampage has some really big drops, um, but they're not like you know. It's all pretty much the you know, natural terrain that you're landing in or coming off of. So they're not like groomed huge you know huge jumps they're they're like you know kind of rough right and uh, yeah, it's big but it's not the the biggest uh, we we did i think um the first series in uh, belgium the one of nikovink yeah it, uh, it's the biggest uh, jumps line of the world yeah that stuff is um is crazy i don't even know how you roll up to a lip like that knowing how fast you you should be going you just Full speed, you don't just send yeah. it, right? Yeah, just full speed and jump. Look no brakes. <laughs> no, no brakes. No brakes. <laughs> no, no. no brakes. Yeah, that's crazy to me because, like, I'm, I'm always speed checking before stuff, and um, but I guess when it gets to that that level, you know, you, there is no speed check. It's just as fast as you can go and, and yeah, just um, let it rip. Yeah, sometimes um, motorbike did the the first uh, first go on the jumps, so we can have a look, but. It's a bit different. That's crazy. So they actually test out those jumps with like a, a dirt bike? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I, um, I couldn't, I, dude, I couldn't imagine. I, I know just standing at the bottom of the lip, like looking up <laughs> is just, um, you know, yeah. it's just crazy. And um, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, so kind of moving on from that kind of stuff, like, um, I know we've talked of, you know, before and, you know, you've ridden our prime nine drivetrain for, um, you know, for quite a while. Um, do you like, obviously you've ridden other drivetrains, you've tried other stuff. Um, like why, why do you think prime nine works for you? And why do you think like our DH drivetrain, you know, works for you? Like what, what's, what's special about those things that you, um, you know, that fit well with how you ride. Yeah, I think uh, I like it because it's uh, durable. It's uh, really something you can uh, have on your bike and don't take too much time to fix it every time you ride. So that's what I like because I'm not really good at mechanic. I don't want to, to waste my time uh, checking uh, the dryer every time I ride. So yeah, it's really good to, to have something you can, uh, you can trust. Well, yeah, like I, I know um, when you're riding some of that, that um, you know, any kind of technical terrain, you know, and you, you drop your bike and, you know, you bend a derailleur hanger or something like it's, yeah. it's tough. Like, um, you know, the, our, our intention with Prime 9 is that it's, it's more forgiving. So like you said, if you're not, you know, a good mechanic or you don't have like the perfect bike setup or, you know, you just crash a lot, um, you know, it just works, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, and uh, I think I have my uh, Prime 9 Deroya for yeah on my uh, Enduro bike, and it's, like, uh, perfect. If it like, lasts a year on your bike, I mean, uh, yeah. that's, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I ride, uh, I don't ride my trail bike as much as my Donnell bike, but I ride, uh, like... Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, how like okay so how much do you time do you think you spend on um you get like a downhill or a free ride bike versus your trail bike like is it like half and half or uh, don't really know I think I ride a lot my e bike during the winter and then I use my trail bike during the summer as well as my downhill bike and uh, yeah I think it's not fifty fifty but like a bit more the only bike and a bit less the trail bike. Okay, that's cool. I try to ride it, to ride uh, as many as I can. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, I think you know riding different types of bikes allows you to um, like grow in those areas, right? Like there's like certain things you can do on a trail bike that you can't do on a downhill bike, and and vice versa. You could just plow over stuff on it. Uh, I like to to change. Like uh, if I ride my e-bike, it's a heavy bike, and then I took my trail bike, and like it's really light. It's uh, it's super nice to to do everything. 
Yeah, no, totally. I, um, I totally agree. And that's why, you know, I know so many people that have different types of mountain bikes or, you know, just in general, different types of bikes. Cause they're, it, it kind of makes it fun. Um, so I got a bunch of questions that people, um, are asking. So maybe I'll, I'll ask some questions that, um, that are from the audience. And if anybody that's watching has any questions, uh, you know, type them into chat and I'll, I'll read them off to Vinny. Okay. Um, so, uh, Alejandro is asking, what's the hardest trick you've ever done? And what, you know, why would you think it's hard or why was it hard to learn? Mm, I don't know, uh, which one is the hardest. But maybe, uh, maybe I, I, I only did once a front flip. Okay. And I think it's the hardest I did. It's just scary. So yeah. as, as you're rolling off the lip, do you grab any front brake or is it just like no. totally in the air? Just yeah, in the air you have to, to go in on the front. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I don't really like this trick, but I, I like to do it only one time or maybe another time uh, later, but I think it's one of the, of the best tricks I did. Yeah, to say like, just to say you did it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, now I've seen you do like some hot bar spins and you know, like, um, have you ever done like 180 bar? Oh uh, yeah, with a dirt jump bike. Oh, on a dirt jumper, yeah, yeah. But you're not, not on a trail bike? Uh, no, no, on the, on the straight bar spin. Yeah, it's hard to get the bike around and get the bars around. Yeah, right? yeah. On With bike, it's not that hard to do a bar spin because the bike is really stable. Yeah. And uh, you have the seat uh, in the right position. It's a bit uh, taller than a dog jump bike. But yeah, to do rotation as well is, I think, pretty hard on. Yeah, just pinch the seat with your knees and try yeah. to push the bike around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that kind of stuff, like watching you do hot bars on a trail bike to me is just like, what? <laughs> like that's, you know, I rode street BMX for so many years and, um, you know, uh, I can do a bar spin on a, like a BMX, like standard BMX bike, but that's, like you said, it's pretty easy. Um, you just have to commit. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the big, that's the hardest part is the, committing yeah. to throwing the bars and trying to catch them and then jamming, <laughs> yeah. trying to catch it. Right? Yeah, but it's a cool, cool trick. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I love watching you do that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, thank you, Alejandro, for that, that question. That's awesome. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you know, type them in the chat. Um, uh, let's see. I got a couple others here. Um, when you were starting off, this is from uh, Chelsea. When you started off riding, how did you learn like how to jump? Like what, is there certain things that you just did or you just like, um, you know, is there any advice you have to anybody starting off? I think you have to start uh, by learning the bunny up, like on a, on a flat, on a flat road, you have to, to be able to, to jump with your bike. And then you just have to repeat this, um, this situation on, on the jump. But, uh, yeah, it yeah. starts with the bunny hop, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's the smartest way to to go for a jump because if you if you want to to jump, yeah, you, you can crash easily if you don't don't know how to to do a bunny hop. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, you know, on a BMX bike or a dirt jumper, it's a little bit different, right? Um, you know, when I started riding mountain bikes, I had trouble like. Um, you know, when you go off a lip and you kind of preload the suspension, um, yeah. that's, it, it could be pretty dangerous to, um, you know, cause it's unpredictable, right? Yeah. You have to set up your bike, uh, like with slow rebound, um, to don't be ejected by the bike. So like when you're doing these really big jumps, you're just straight rolling off the lip as smooth as possible. Right. Yeah, and do like uh, like a bunny up at the end of the jump, like. Okay. Uh, and then w when you're in the air, like, how do you how do you control the pitch of the bike? Like, um, do you grab brake in the air to maybe bring the nose down? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes uh, you can grab the rear brakes, and uh, it will stop the wheels and go the bike go a bit on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
for me, um, you know, riding BMX bikes, again, that was something that we learned because um, a lot of the jumps that I grew up riding were, you know, they're straight up and straight yeah, down. So yeah. you, you have a lot of air time, right? There's a lot of time when you're in the air, but you have to bring the nose of the bike down very yeah. fast. Yeah, um, that's a good, good things to, to learn. Thing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but controlling that can be kind of scary, right? Sometimes yeah. coming into a, a landing too nose heavy is very, oh, oh man, yeah. scary. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to ride out a nose wheelie. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I've done it too many times. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you, Chelsea, for that. Uh, I hope that helps some people with uh, like that are trying to get into jumping. So you know, that's a that's a good question. Um, so Jamie has an, a question here. Uh, if there's only one bike you could have, what would it be? A trail bike, a DH bike, e-bike? Like, what would what would you do? Oh, it's a hard question. I think uh, I will go for the trail bike because you can do pretty much everything with a trail bike. Totally. Uh, yeah, you you can pedal around, go somewhere, and you can ride uh, in bike parks as well. And if you if you set up the suspensions really hard, you can even uh, do a bit of dirt jump, I think. So if I have to choose only one, I think I will choose a trail bike. Trail bike. Thank you, Jamie, for that question. Mm. Um, let's see. Vignesh has a question. Like, I, I kind of think we talked about this a little bit. Like, how did you get into mountain biking? You just saw other people like riding. And you kind of like that was something you wanted to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and with I think you have to to go with friends because it it helps a lot to to progress. You you set up some goals with them, and uh, yeah, I think it's the best way to to learn something with with others. Because if you are alone, it's a bit a uh, bit hard, a bit hard, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, and that kind of brings uh, me to another question I have here uh, from Macham. Um, how do you learn new tricks? Do you like, it's you and your friends out there, right? Like, and you're just talking and it's just like, you kind of push each other to do new stuff or like, Hey, try this, or I'm trying that. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time we, we, we do that. Like uh, we are with friends on the, some, some, yeah, some friends say, Oh, we, we should learn that. that. So we, we do that. And uh, first, it's good to to learn on a soft landing. Maybe if you have a foam pit uh, or something like that, it's good to to learn rotations uh, on it. And, uh, if you just want to to try basic tricks, so uh, you can do it on a uh, every jump. I think. Yeah, no, totally. Um, we had one jump that was a it was a step up, right? So oh. it it helped uh, it helped with like you know, not landing super far down. And then we had wood chips um, yeah. you know, on top of the step up. So we would just use it as like a fly out and you could, yeah. that's, that's how I learned bar spins. I uh, think it's just the uh, best setup to learn something like a uh, step up with wood uh, things on, on it. Yeah, I, um, uh, I think that's the one jump that I've crashed probably the most on because you're trying to <laughs> stuff but it's okay because when you crash, it's just like, okay. So yeah. you can commit to a trick and try it without like being so scared that you have to land to dirt or like if you're at the skate park, landing on yeah. concrete, uh, not very forgiving. No, no, I think you, you need to, to crash a bit before learning a, a new tricks. Totally. So um, your advice is, you know, get comfortable with crashing, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a that's yeah. something that I I'm really bad at. I don't like crashing, right? I, no, it's normal, but yeah. yeah. Sometimes you eat it. Sometimes you you don't. I don't know. It's it's tough, but um, that's definitely a, a good uh, a good tip for everybody. Um, that's about it for all these questions here. So I think we're going to move on to um, we have a poll we're going to put up for everybody. Uh, if you guys could just answer these three questions, that would be um, you know that would be super cool. Uh, this helps us, you know, get some information from you guys. And the, and the questions are pretty simple. Um, you know, have you ever watched Red Bull Rampage? Um, you know, have you been riding during this pandemic? You know, what kind of riding do you enjoy the most? Um, and then, you know, I always try to do better job, you know, 
as we do more of these webinars, and I hope you guys enjoy this, um, you know, this interview with Vinny. Um, I definitely like learned some stuff and like got to ask him some questions, even though we've talked before. So um, if there's other people you want to see maybe on these webinars or uh, technical topics. So two weeks ago, I took apart a box clutch, uh, serviced it, put it back together, like uh, stuff like that. If you guys have cool ideas for me, um, you know, I'm totally too uh, cool with, um, you know, taking your suggestions or things that I can do better. So, um, you know, let us know. Uh, we're going to close this poll in um, a little bit. It has nothing to do with the entry of the raffle. Um, but after we're done with this poll, um, we're going to raffle this baby off. So just, uh, just get your answers in here. It looks like most of you have voted. There's still a couple people here. And I, I got one. Um, one comment here from Aiden that it won't let it uh, will let you vote, but that's that's okay. We appreciate your you trying. Um, again, it doesn't have to do anything with the the raffle. If you can't vote, it's not a big deal. As long as you're in this webinar right now, your um, your name is entered to to win this. So don't worry about it. Sometimes on uh, on my phone, Zoom doesn't let me do certain things too. Um, so I don't know, bad connection or something, but. Um, yeah. What's, uh, Vinny, while we're waiting for some more answers here, um, any big plans for the rest of 2020 or you're just kind of waiting to see, you know, what happens with events and like, if you can travel? Yeah, yeah that's uh, the main question, I think. And, uh, I hope to, to be able to travel to somewhere at least. And uh, if not, I will, uh, I will stay at home and I have many things to do also at home. So totally in um, both places, it's okay for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And it, it allows you to focus on like filming and digging, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, um, you know, I know, I, like I said, I like watching your Instagram and you guys doing some, some cool stuff. And um, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely interesting to see different terrains from what we see here and, you know, how you guys ride them and um, what was it like uh, a couple posts back, you're just like covered in mud. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the, the opening of a bike park and it was so fun to ride uh, in this in these conditions. Yeah, yeah, I, I um, here in Southern California, it really doesn't rain that much. So it's been a while since I've been, you know, covered like that. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good amount of mud. Um, yeah. So I would say everybody go follow Vinny on, uh, on Instagram. Um, Chloe maybe can put up the, uh, the links to that into chat. So all you guys just have to click a link and you can, you can follow him. Yeah. His content is super cool. Uh, he does a lot of really, really interesting stuff. So, you know, uh, click the link that Chloe just sent out. I'm going to end this poll. We still got some people that didn't vote, but that's okay. Um, thank you everyone who has voted. Here are the results, so you guys can see them. Um, now Chloe is going to put up um, the randomizer and we're gonna do this raffle. So if you guys all can look at the screen, all of your names are in here. Um, the way this is gonna work is uh, Chloe's gonna choose at random and um, you know, fingers crossed for all of you. Only one person's going to win. And then um, you know, once we get this uh, this going, Vinny's going to read off the name, and um, we'll reach out to you with um, instructions, and we'll ask for a shipping address and that kind of stuff, so that we can uh, we can ship this uh, no matter where you are in the world. Again, the only restrictions are that you're in this webinar right now. You follow Box Mountain Bike on Instagram and um, you're 13 years old or older. So um, go for it, Chloe. Drum roll. Let's see. It looks like it's Cal. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Going great. Uh, so I guess um, we'll reach out to Cal, um, congratulations. Thank you all for playing. Um, 
again, we do these webinars every two weeks. Um, so, you know, join us on the next one. We usually give stuff away. Um, I'm always giving away random bike information for free. Um, I mean, you guys can listen to me ramble about bike stuff. Um, if you guys have um, any questions, um, you know, anything you need, you know, I'm super stoked that Vinny was here with us today and, uh, you know, giving away this drivetrain is awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Vinny. No problem. If there's any anything you want to say to everybody out there, Vinny, you know, go feel free. Thank you for watching and uh, see you maybe somewhere. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining. We're going to end this now. Um, uh, send me an email if you have any questions. It's Ethan, E-T-H-A-N, at boxcomponents.com. Um, you know, if there's anything you think I could do better, any questions you have for me, um, you know, you can see right here, I'm in our R and D department here in box in Southern California. Um, so yeah, hit us up and, and we'll get back to you again. Thank you, Vinny so much. Uh, we'll talk soon and, uh, thank you everybody. Have a good day and be safe and, um, go follow Vinny on social media and, um, yeah, let us know. <laughs> Thanks Vinny. Bye-bye. Bye everybody.